Shabbat Shalom, Haverim, and welcome to Torah Town. I am going to be your teacher today. I am Teacher Gigi. Today's parasha is called Shoftim. Jeshua, Bread of Life, wants to teach you this wonderful Torah curriculum brought to you by El Shaddai Ministries. Before we begin, Haverim, let's pray. Let's pray to our Abba, our Father, for all the good things that he has done for us this week. Can you think of the blessings that the Lord has done for you this week? I sure can. So let's pray. Alvinu Malkenu. Our Father, our King, may you, Abba, be with us today. Please, Father God, forgive us for our mistakes and our sins. Please, Father, help us to be able to always come to you when we are in need. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Abba, for you are so good to me. You are so good to our children. You are good to us, Lord God, in every single way. Thank you, Father God, for your mercy, for always blessing us through this week and every week. Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Now, it is important that we also understand that God has blessed us to be gentle, gentle children, kind to others. So we need to give thanks to Abba. Thanks for his Holy Spirit that helps us to be gentle and be kind to others, to know what to do when it's right and to know what to do when it's wrong. So we always, always need to be grateful. So let's take a moment to praise Adonai. You know, praising Adonai is a way to say thank you for his goodness and for giving you gentleness, just like Yeshua. Do you know how we can also praise Adonai? Giving him a shout of joy! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Do you know why we need to shout to the Lord? Because, just like the Hebrew word says, Shabbat, it's an expression of shout. In God's word, in Psalms 145.4, it says that each generation will praise your works to the next and proclaim your mighty acts. Remember how you have been learning about Adonai and what he did for his people, Israel? And you remember all those wonderful works? Do you know he's still doing those same works in your life? Maybe he didn't part the Red Sea, but maybe he allowed you and your family to have a home, to have healing, to have joy, to have him to turn to. Because Yeshua is your friend. Yeshua is always there for you. And that's what matters the most. So let's give him a shout, shall we? Join me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Adonai. Are you ready for today's lesson? Today's parasha is called Shoftim. Shoftim in Hebrew means judges. Today we're going to study Shoftim in the books of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18, Isaiah 
chapter 51, verse 12, through chapter 52, verse 12, and Acts, chapter 10 through 12. Does your mom sometimes know what you are going to do even before you do it? I know my mom did. Just before the Israelites went in to possess the land God was giving them, God told them what they would ask for before they ever asked. God said, you will want a king over you like all the nations have. And God told them how to have a good king. He said, have only the king I choose for you, one who is from your brethren. Your king is not to have lots of horses, and he must not make the people return to Egypt for even more horses. Also, he must not have lots of wives, or his heart could turn away from God. He must not have lots of silver and gold for himself. How was God protecting the king and the people with these rules? And why do you think God told the king not to do these things? The Lord told him what he should do by saying, The king shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book. And it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life. So he will learn to fear, honor the Lord, his God, and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes. What did the Lord want the king to do with the law? Hmm... And then Moses told them something that God would do, saying, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. God was going to send someone like Moses to lead his people. He would come from the Jewish people, and the people are to hear him. You know, like Shema, which means hear and obey. God said he will put his very own words in this prophet's mouth, and he shall speak them all that I command him. Who do you think this could be? Isaiah gives us some big clues about who God would send. Listen to these clues and see if you know who is being described. Clue number one. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, for law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light to the peoples. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. Clue number two. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Who do you think? These verses are describing, that's right, they're describing our King, Yeshua, the Messiah. Do you know that the name Yeshua means salvation? In Hebrew letters, 
the name Yeshua is spelled Yud Shin Vav Ayin. If you take the meaning of each letter, you could get this sentence. Understand the hand with the nail will destroy that which would destroy you. Understand the hand with the nail will bring you salvation. Do you know what that means? That we are the ones that can destroy ourselves. But Yeshua, through his sacrifice with the nails, right? Because he was crucified. He brought us salvation. Now let me tell you a story about salvation. In the book of Acts, Peter was a captive put in prison by King Herod. King Herod was harassing the church. Herod didn't want Peter to escape, so he put him in chains with four squads of soldiers to keep him in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly! And Peter's chains fell off. The angel told Peter to get dressed and to follow him. Peter thought he was dreaming, but the angel was real. Peter and the angel walked right past the guards, and Peter ended up at a house where people were praying. When Peter went into the house, the people were astonished. Peter told them how the Lord was, had brought him out of prison. He was no longer captive. Hallelujah! He had been set free. Why should we be praying for believers who are in trouble? So let's answer the question. We need to pray for believers who are in trouble. Why? Because when we pray, we always ask in Yeshua's mighty name. That's right. Yeshua is the only one who can give us what? Salvation. He's the only one who can set us free from all the bad things that we can do to destroy us. So it is our responsibility, Chevarim, to always pray for others, to pray for ourselves as well, to ask for forgiveness, to give thanks, and bless our Adonai. Ask it all in Yeshua's mighty name, and it shall be done. That's what God's word says. So it is our duty as his believers to follow his mitzvot and set the example, just like Yeshua did with us. So with today's parasha, remember, God is our judge, and he is also our salvation. So it is important to do the right thing. So, I hope that you understood everything that was told to you today and that you put it to action. Tell your parents about it. All right? Now let me pray the blessing over you. Ya her Adonai para velecha vejuneja. Isa Adonai para velecha veatsem lecha. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace.
Shabbat Shalom.